got your Bibles, I'm going to read from two portions of scriptures. I'm going to first go to Titus chapter 2, and I'm going to start reading it. Verse 11, then I'm going to go to 1 John chapter 1. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Verse 11, once again, for the grace of God that bring us salvation, hath appeared to all men, verse 12, teaching us, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. First John chapter 1, I'm, gonna be, I'm just going to read verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for the grace of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. I ask you, Father, to anoint my lips of clay as I give this thought this morning. Help people who listen to receive the grace of God if they're not saved this morning. I ask you to deal with them especially in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for his grace. That's the title of my message. I heard a lady testify not long ago. She was talking about the Proverbs 31 woman, the virtuous woman. This lady, I forget if she's in her late 50s or early 60s, but she didn't really get saved until she... Uh, got in her 50s she admitted during her message <clears throat> that she had not always been a virtuous woman that she had failed in the way she raised her children but she went on to tell thank the lord for his grace and that's something we should all be thankful for this morning the grace of god and the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. I'm thankful for his grace. Was well, grace? It's God's in unmerited favor. I like how the late brother L.D. Savage put it. It's God's unmerited favor in spite of his merited judgment. We deserve the judgment of God. The Bible says, Romans 3.23, For all have sinned. And have come short of the glory of God. That's each and every one of us. I'll tell you what. When I was a sinner, I'll tell you. I knew I was heading to hell. I knew I was on the wrong path. I knew that the road of destruction lay ahead of me. If I didn't change. I knew that. And I even knew that I deserved it. But thank God. The great for his grace. This morning, it's God's richest. G, God's, R, richest, A, at, C, Christ, E, expense. I'll tell you something this morning. We can have the grace of God if we want it. We can have a changed life. We can have our lives. Under the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, who cleanses us from all sin. Some of you may say, Now, Brother Roy, I've been a great failure in life. I have committed crimes. How many people this morning may even hear me in jail? I don't know. But you can now say, But you know what I can tell you? 
same grace that saved me can save you. The same blood of Jesus Christ that cleansed me from my sins at the age of 19 can cleanse you from your sins, regardless how old you are. This morning, friend, we need to be like that lady I heard testify. She realized that she had gone the wrong way. <clears throat> she realized that she had failed as a mother. Maybe you're here this morning listening. You say, listen, Brother Chip, I have failed as a mother. I have failed as a wife. Maybe you said, I failed as a dad. I failed as a husband. I failed at my job. I worked as hard as I could, but I got greedy. Or maybe I'd done some things that caused me to be fired. It was all wrong. I'll tell you something. Or maybe this morning, you're bound by drugs, bound by alcohol. Thank God the blood of Jesus Christ has set free many drug addicts. It's set free many people involved in alcohol. As I probably heard me tell before about Dr. E. Stanley Jones. This happened well over a hundred years ago. He was preaching on, I think in a courtyard somewhere. There was a drunk there listening to him. After he got done preaching, him and that drunk man went into church together. You know what happened? That man called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God forgave him. God set him free. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things pass all things all things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen. That drunkard, when he called on the Lord, was instantaneously sobered. He took the bottle and threw it outside and smashed it. He walked with a cane because of the way he staggered. He handed Doctor Jones his cane, said, "I don't need that anymore." As he walked out to church, a new man in Jesus. I'll tell you something. He can take the worst case, the worst sinner, and save them. And they be born again and make them a great saint. Maybe you have failed God many ways. Maybe you've not been a virtuous woman. Maybe you have some things in your past that you don't even want anybody to know because of how shameful it is. Thank God the blood of Jesus Christ. God's Son cleanses us from all sin. All you have to do is receive Jesus this morning. You have to first off recognize your need. All have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Maybe you weren't a, quote, bad sinner. You still didn't know Jesus. It doesn't matter where you're like Nicodemus who was religious but lost, or the woman in John 3, or like the woman at the well in John chapter 4, who bent the Samaritan, who Jesus said, Thou hast had five husbands, the one you now have is not your own. Had to go in to the well in the heat of the day to draw water, because that way, People would not have to associate with her. Thank God she met the Lord that day. Rather, the Lord met her and gloriously saved her and gloriously cleansed her. The Lord, before he would give her the grace, dealt with her sin. As a result, she was gloriously saved that day. I believe Nicodemus was gloriously saved. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Thankful for His grace. Recognize your need. Repent of your sin. That's just godly sorrow. Really, I believe godly sorrow or repentance is a work of the Holy Ghost in your heart and life. Amen. He works to give you that godly sorrow 
And then just by simple faith, recognize that Jesus is died and rose again. The Bible says, For thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth of confession is made unto salvation. And then by faith simply receive him. The Bible says, John 1, 12, As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even as many as that believe on his name. This morning, why not receive the grace of God today? Why not ask Jesus to come into your heart and life and forgive you and cleanse you and make you that new creature? Amen. The Bible says, For by grace you are saved through faith. Not that that's not of yourself. Not of works, lest any man should boast. This morning, maybe you failed to be like a virtuous woman, like that woman I heard testify recently. Maybe you've led your children astray. This woman, I don't know if she led them astray per se, but this woman said before she was 19 years old, she had had three children. I think she raised a total of six, if I got the story about her correct. Thank God she finally came to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, sinner friend, you can receive that same saving knowledge. All you have to do is by faith recognize your need, repent, and receive Him. God bless you.